you can all hear me. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, liberating structures. It's, um, it's a set of facilitation techniques uh, to really, uh, the purpose of it is to really engage everyone in productively moving forward. Um, so I'm going to do an intro to liberating structures, what it is and um, what it's based on. Um, and then I'll give you some examples of some of the techniques that we could possibly use uh, at the conference in a, in a workshop setting. And then I'll also provide some, um, some resources uh, to if you're interested in moving further. Um, so, uh, so what are liberating structures? Um, liberating structures are, uh, at their core, simple rules that can be used uh, to include everyone in a meeting in, in shaping the future. There's a variety of structures, as you see uh, here. Um, there's over 33 structures, and they're, they're, they're constantly in development. Uh, they are open source, so um, so they're they're free to use, free to distribute as, as long as it's for uh, uh, you know not not for commercial uh, reuse, but um, but they're free to reuse. Mm -hmm. So um, so they're a growing collection of of group processes and and facilitation me methods that um, that make it easy for members of any group to radically change how they interact and work together. Um, and the purpose of them is to really liberate energy in the room. You tap into collective intelligence, uh, you stimulate creativity. Um, and, and what I found is that you get, you get surprisingly better results than traditional methods such as the presentation or lecture method. Um, sorry, am I going too fast? Is this okay? Uh, okay for me. Okay. Um, now, the interesting thing is that it's based on uh, complexity science, um, this notion that um, a human interaction itself is, is, is highly complex. And so um, it really leverages that complexity to engage everyone. Uh, just a quote about complexity science. It's concerned about uh, complex systems and problems that are dynamic, unpredictable, and multidimensional, consisting of a collection of interconnected relationships. So what you're doing when you're using liberating structures is you're really acknowledging in the room the complexity of the, of the people that are there, the experience they have, the, the, um, the insights that they could possibly share, and the possible interactions that could lead to innovation or can lead to new ideas and creativity. You really don't know until you start harnessing what is in the room. And so the idea is to really go away from be, trying to be in control of everything and presenting and just spending all your time uh, with one person presenting, but you're really trying to leverage all the, the complex but rich dynamics that are in the room. Um, and as you can see, there's all sorts of different ways in which people can, can interact with each other. And the idea of liberating structures is that you're, you're liberating people to uh, engage so you're allowing everyone to engage that's the liberating part but then the structured part is that you it's highly con, it's highly structured or controlled in the sense that you're timing or you're introducing steps for how people will, will interact and i'll explain that a little bit later um, but the the idea is uh, the, you know the questions we ask ourselves is you know how can we engage stakeholders in a structured but in a structured but inclusive way and also, how can presenters and facilitators sort of release control and tap into the collective potential uh, for innovation uh, that's in the room? Um, so, so right here, uh, it's, it's sort of a diagram that shows you uh, a spectrum. So it's a spectrum on the, on the, on the x-axis, you know, the number of people involved, one person versus everybody. And on the y-axis is you know centralized control versus distributed control, and um, uh, the, the people who designed uh, liberating structures sort of map this out. And uh, the presentation, if you see on the on the bottom right corner, bottom left corner, is highly uh, centralized control, and it's only involving one person. Um, uh, similarly, the managed discussion is also in that uh, quadrant 
where it's still fewer people involved and there's still it's still highly controlled. Um, the open discussion is also um, you're you're distributing control, but the problem with open discussion is that you you know it, you must have experienced it when you say to the room you know anyone have any questions and maybe one person raises their hand or maybe the most outspoken or or extrovert person raises their hand and then they do all the talking so uh, so the problem with open discussion is that it's it's unstructured and and it can it can allow for the um the quieter people to not get their voices heard and so the idea with liberating structures um, is that you're really releasing, you're allowing everyone to be involved um, in moving forward. That's not to say that there's no role for an expert or a presenter or someone to dispense knowledge. Uh, you can certainly do that, but then you can intersperse that with things like uh, liberating structures. Um, any questions about that? Or I can move on. I think this concept is, is very new to us. So maybe <laughs> <Okay>. we'll have. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me let me uh, show maybe some examples that would that would help. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. I'll give you some very sim um, uh -huh. so so I'll just uh, last two slides for introducing it. But um, so the idea of, of deploying liberating structures, they're expertless. You don't need to be. You don't have any certification in this. Um, you're, we're focused on results. Um, Rapid cycling, meaning you know, if if we need to go through a, a stage of discussion over and over again to get more better results, we can cycle through that. We can have fun doing it because everyone can be engaged in in a productive discussion. They can be on their feet. They can be moving around in a in a structured way. We're including everyone. Uh, it can be scaled up. It could be a thousand people in the room. It could be ten people. It doesn't it doesn't matter. Um, and um, it's self-spreading in the sense that other people can take this on and, and also start, um, you know, really changing the way they do their own meetings. And it's, it's modular. You can sort of move it around the different components of it. So I'm just going to explain really simply um, the components of a, of a simple uh, liberating structure. Um, it, there's always going to be an invitation, a question that you ask people. Um, you're going to distribute the part of participation. You're going to tell people how how they're going to participate um, you're going to have people in various configurations of groups um, and then you're going to arrange the space in the room you're going to be aware of the room and and where people are situated and seating if it's a if it's a room with fixed seating that will be a, a little bit harder to to do because it's less flexible but if it's in an open space room it'll be easier to move around and, and to arrange uh, the space and then there's going to be a, a sequence or allocation of time. Um, and I'll, I'll give you an example of that. So, so um, the first step is, is if you were going to use these, um, uh, and, and maybe I should come back to this uh, later, but um, if you're going to use these in a conference, you would really have to define the purpose of your meeting, uh, understand what you want to achieve, understand the space you're in and how many are attending and how much time you have. And then uh, you can choose from a number of liberating structures based on your purpose. Each um, liberating structures would, would have its own uh, steps for how to implement it. Uh, and, it's, and it's free to use, it's open source. And then um, what you would do is you would, um, you would facilitate the, the, the uh, you would facilitate using those five components, the, the invitation, the distribution and configuration of the group. So uh, I'll, I'll, show, I'll show you a really simple one. Uh, and just before that, there's a book about it. There's the website liberatingstructures.com and there's also an app uh, to help you uh, even implement this even on the fly uh, with those minimum specs that you need. There's an app for that. There is an app for that, yes. <laughs> um, and it was designed by a Seattle-based, uh, these uh, Keith and Henry, uh, they're based in Seattle and they were the, the sort of the um, initiators of this. And so I'm working closely with them in Vancouver on, on, uh, on, on using these techniques. So um, I'll give you some really simple examples. Um, here's one, one example, it's called impromptu networking. 
Uh, the purpose is to rapidly share challenges and expectations and build new connections. So if you're in a room with a bunch of people and it's all awkward, and no one knows each other, um, what you do is um, you, you get them to stand up and find someone new. Um, re and they, ha they have to respond to an invitation. So it's not just, you know, tell them your name and where you're from. It's, you know, wh uh, what do you think about, um, uh, about learning engineering? Uh, you, you have a specific invitation or question to, to ask them. And then they have one minute each to, um, to um, respond to that question. And then they take turns. Uh, and then after those two minutes, the people will actually find a new person to talk with and they'll go through the same cycle again. So in this way, you have in six minutes, you would get the entire room to be able to meet multiple people and engage in a, in a very relevant question that you really want to um, get them thinking about. And so it's very quick, and it's easy to implement, and if you have some slides on the screen uh, to show them that question and the timing, um, it's very easy uh, to implement. Uh, another very simple uh, liberating structure, it's a, sort of the standard one. If you, if, if, if you get anything out of this uh, presentation, it would be something like this. Uh, one, two, four all is the purpose of it is to engage everyone simultaneously in generating questions, ideas, and suggestions. So if that's your goal, then you can deploy this. Um, if you really want to generate some ideas or really get people thinking about their own context about what you're talking about, you can use this technique. And similar to um, think, pair, share, but it's more structured. The idea is that you have one minute alone uh, in silence to really think of something. It's great for introverts who just really need to process things uh, on their own. Uh, but then you have them get into pairs of two uh, to talk about it one minute each to talk about what they just thought about. And then, and then in groups of four, you're gonna give them more time to really uh, come up with some common uh, themes that you want to bring back to the whole group. And then uh, everyone, then you as the presenter, you can really pull in from all the tables um, to hear what everyone just discussed. And so you can get a very rich uh, array of, of input and, and you can really feel what's in the room in terms of the ideas being generated. And that can be recorded. That can be recorded. Uh, the ideas can be recorded online. They can be recorded on uh, you know, uh, flip charts. Uh, you can capture what was generated there as well. Um, in, I'll give you an example. Uh, let's say I had an invitation of, of what particular problem or challenge am I facing in implementing cross-platform learning analytics via open standards such as ACE API. Mm -hmm. So they would, you would literally get them that you would have a timer. Um, I, I think my timer will work. Uh, you would have a timer of 60 seconds um, for them to think about it. Then, then they get into pairs, two minutes in pairs, you'd have a timer for two minutes and then four minutes in a group. This is optional. If you don't have a lot of time, you can skip this step. But um, the idea is that you, you give them the four minutes. There's a visual of the timer on the screen, so it's highly structured and they're not worried about going on forever. Uh, you're also in control of the time. Um, but then you have a very clear question or invitation on the screen to get them to sort of productively talk about these things. You can assign a note taker or someone to capture that knowledge. And then, and then as, a, as a discussion, we're trying to say, what were some commonalities? Let's share, with, let's share your, your best ideas that you just got out of that session. Um, so you know, if we were to do one thing, there are, there are many other liberating structures we can do, but if we were to do one little thing at the conference, for example, this could be an example where where you just do, uh, this is approximately, it takes approximately 12 minutes to do all of this. And then, and then you, can, um, uh, you can get a lot of rich um, input uh, into it. Now, uh, for advanced users, if you wanna do even more than that, if you really want to get everyone together from the conference and, and, 
you know, if there's some action plans that need to be made or if there's some real uh, more complex problems that need to be solved all together with the, the best brains in the room, uh, then there's other uh, things that we could do. Um, for example, this activity, um, what, so what, now what? You're basically saying what just happened, um, why is that important, and, and what are we going to do now about it? Um, you're trying to look back on the progress made to date, in this case with the, the icicle SIGs um, or, or similar, and then what adjustments are needed, how are we going to move forward, uh, you know, what are the takeaways uh, that we're going to uh, work on next. Um, so um, that kind of uh, exercise would have some structure to it. It would, um, it would, you would start with the, the what, what happened. You would move to why, so what, why is that important? And then you would do, okay, so now what, what, what actions make sense? What, 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 uh, what can we do to move forward? This is, this is a longer sort of exercise. It would have to be maybe a 30 to 40 minute session to really uh, sift through that. Uh, I'm not sure if we have time for that, but that's, um, that's one, one thing you can do, which could be highly productive to really wrap up a conference or a meeting or a, or, or a workshop. So, yeah. Um, I, I think the, uh, the open ended process and then they come back with those collective intelligence. Mm. And that's very interesting. Um, but if I like to deliver an important message, mm. and, right. or it's very educational, uh, mm. I, I need to deliver knowledge, uh, what yes. would you suggest? So what I would suggest for that is then you would, um, you would present, um, but you wouldn't, um, you would present for, um, a certain length of time. Maybe it's maybe you can break up your session into into several uh, TED Talk style discussions. So let's say you talk for 20 minutes or 15 minutes, but then you spend five minutes um, doing a quick discussion. You have an you have a, a question to ask everyone, and you break up your discussion uh, like that. Um, and in this way. Uh, you're able to really get everyone thinking about what you just said because often often people uh, need to process information to make mm -hmm. it relevant for them. Yeah. Um, and of course, there's no rule. You, if you have a, a very uh, engaging discussion, you can go on for 50 minutes. Um, you know, the, the attention span is usually, you know, peaks at around, uh, research says it peaks at around 20 minutes, but, um, you know, uh, certainly, you can you can be seated for up to 50 minutes but really after 50 minutes you need you need to walk around you need to do something so um so the the liberating structures could give you an opportunity to break up a, a you know a presentation that has a lot of complex information and really allow people to digest that um either on their own or or working or talking it out with people because um the research also shows that, shows that when you articulate your thoughts, um, your brain is processing that information in a better way. You're, you're trying to articulate and, and express in words what you just heard, and you're, the brain is creating connections and, um, and, and solidifying that information. And it's also, you know, when you talk with someone, you're also being open to their ideas, so you get a a different perspective. So there's a lot of benefits in terms of the takeaways um, from the session uh, for you to mix it up with some some of these engagement uh, pieces. Yeah. Um, I, I I just had a few more examples, and then then I, we can uh, then I'll I'll, uh, I'll I'll be wrapping up. Okay. Um, another. Uh, Again, this is more advanced, I'll, but I'll uh, I skip over it. Another idea is that you, you set up a, a set of liberating structures together in a string. Um, and the idea is that, um, sorry, um, uh, I'll, I'll show you that example here. Uh, so you would list, you would have a series of, of liberating structures to do in sequence, and they're all sort of building up um, to an end point. Um, that is definitely an advanced usage of it. 
um, so I don't, I, you know, I don't want to overwhelm you, but, but the, po the possibility of really moving a whole group of people forward and generating a lot of ideas, especially if you have experts in a room, mm -hmm. this is a great um, approach to that. Um, when you say expert, uh, are you saying uh, this deliberating structural expert or a subject matter expert? Um, yeah, let's say, for example, at the ICICLE conference, there will be a lot of experts. There will be a lot of people who, who know a lot of different things. And you may want to, maybe one of the purposes is to facilitate collaboration and to facilitate um, uh, what's called um, you know serendipitous or, or, or you know uh, spontaneous you know interconnections with with each other and yeah. there may be there may be surprising results of different people uh, working together uh, on something so but but maybe this is more of a question for the whole conference and, and less for the uh, I see um, but I'll, I'll show you a few other examples um, uh, Eco-cycle planning is a really interesting exercise. Uh, it's uh, the purpose is to analyze the full portfolio of activities and relationships to identify obstacles and opportunities for progress. And the idea here is like, let's say we want to implement XAPI in a um, in a in an organization. You really need to understand um, where it falls in with this call, this eco-cycle planning. So uh, here's this diagram um, where you. Start Start from birth uh, to maturity, but then um, you hit a point where you have a rigidity trap. You, you know the the technologies are getting old; they're not doing what they should do, and they really should be, um, you know, they should be uh, decommissioned, uh, discontinued. And so you need to sort of creatively destruct, destroy those those tools, and allow for a renewal. Allow for uh, a renewal of those platforms. Uh, the problem with the renewal is that you can hit a poverty trap where you don't have enough investment, you don't have enough expertise, you don't have enough um, willpower uh, to do something. And that's maybe where some people are stuck in, in, in relation to XAPI and also in relation to learning engineering. If learning engineering is this new profession, then um, there needs to be some investment put in, otherwise they'll have a poverty trap. They'll, they'll, they'll they, nothing will happen. Uh, mm -hmm. But if, 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 if there's investment of resources and talent um, using the right tools, it can really birth into something, uh, it, it can really grow into something great. So this exercise would allow people to, sh to, to map out where they're at in their stage of, of implementing XAPI or learning analytics or, or similar technologies. And it might really help people in the room to see, wow, we, we have invested so much in, in these other technologies, they're all mature, but they're hitting this rigidity trap. We actually need to destroy or, or decommission or, um, those things and then allow for a renewal. <laughs> so that's, a, that's an intense activity that you could do, but it's also, it allows for a visual to form where people are maybe putting post-it notes on this big map and or, or, or visualizing this in some way where they see where their own uh, platforms and technologies are at in this cycle. So this will need longer time, right? This may need a longer time, yeah, 35 to nine, uh, yeah, I think, uh, what did it say, uh, 95 minutes, but that's a suggested. Uh, you can also do it in a shorter amount of time. You could do it in, in 40 minutes. It, it, you just need the time for, people um, to you know to think through this um, you can you can modify it to be done in a shorter time I see and like you can give everyone a handout of this and, and, and get a, if, if they're all from different organizations then you can give them a handout and each person does it by themselves for maybe two to three minutes and then they discuss it in groups of uh, you know smaller groups and then um, that you you sort of try to gather uh, some shared commonality. So is there a, a structural conversation you need to design beforehand? 
yeah again you would use the the app or the or the website there's 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 a, a way to structure this a recommended way to structure this okay. um, and you would just have to customize it to the context you're in and and give them some very simple instructions uh, you know spend one minute uh, you know maybe you would explain this map and then you would um, give instructions on on what they should do, they need to map out their their technologies in terms of where they are, and then you would probably want to move to just a question of okay, so what's happening here? What do you see? What do you observe in it? And and how can we allow for more innovation? How can we uh, allow for the introduction of new technology? So you'd have some sort of question like that. Um, the the out the outcome would be that people have a realization of where their own context is at in relation to either learning engineering or XAPI or whatever it is, but it, they start coming clearer about how they need to move forward. There's I, I have one more example. Uh, and this is uh, this is a this is a fun one. Is that um, um, one more example? Is it's called making space with Triz. The idea is to is is to notice what you need to stop doing. This stop the counterproductive activities and behaviors to make space for innovation. So it's similar to ecocycle planning in that um, you're starting to notice what are the things that can completely ruin your uh, your goal of employing learning engineers or your goal of creating a cross-platform xapi enabled you know um, learning analytics mm -hmm. platform you, you you imagine what can be the most counterproductive thing to that goal and let's say it is you know insist on using a standard uh, you know I don't know, uh, enterprise management system or that is non XAPI compliant or you know, like they start imagining all the things they can do to completely fail at achieving their goals. And then, then what they do is they reflect on what are the things that we're doing right now that are part of that list? Um, are we doing anything right now that is actually counterproductive to these goals? And what do we need to stop doing in order to achieve those goals? It can be a fun and interesting discussion, but um, so I hope I hope that with those um, examples that I, I um, that I can show you that I sort of described um, a little bit about what it is. Um, it doesn't require a lot of practice, it, it, you know, and I'm happy to to help anyone who wants to use them. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I I made some resources here. Um, uh, it's and I'll put the slides in that folder and I'll send you a link to the slides as well. Uh, but um, uh, I'll just show you. Uh, this is an example of of a resource where it states all of the purposes, and if one of the purposes uh, makes sense to you, then you find the corresponding uh, liberating structure, uh, and then you you look further into that. Um, uh, you, you find which one it is, and then you can uh, go on your on on the Liberty Instructors website to um, uh, to find out how to do that. Uh, let's say uh, it was one two four all. Um, you can look at what what the minimum minimum specifications are, and then read um, read what uh, what it how you need to implement it. Um, so I'll I'll send those links to Jesse, uh, or I'll, I can include them in the chat too. But um, yeah, so that was all I had to uh, to show you. And if you had any uh, questions about that, or you can go back and, and review some of those things as well. Yeah, thank you very much for uh, offering help to us when designing the sessions or workshop. Um, yeah. I. I think I will give the floor to all of you. Uh, you have any question for Barish or you need help from Barish? Um, we use some of these techniques in some of the ways that we run meetings. Oh, great. 
at our company and and what I found is that they work really well when the people in the room know one another mm-hmm. and there is a sort of a there's a natural resistance barrier when the people in the room don't yeah. know each other very well. Right. Um, what what I found is that if you were to uh, plan in advance a specific question to to give to the whole group it often really allows them to jump in mm-hmm. rather than you know talking about the weather or you know introduce yourself uh, that could be awkward if you jump into the the question at hand or the relevant topic and you give them um, structured time mm-hmm. um, it motivates people to just jump in and and start engaging and that often can break the ice mm-hmm. fairly well so designing question is important right yes yeah designing that that is the most challenging part of of this whole thing is is really to ask the right questions to the group yeah um and um and there's it is definitely a skill um you don't want to and you don't want to ask yes and no questions. You want to be sort of asking open-ended questions. Um, you want to ask questions that don't have a clear answer, like, uh, you know, how can we both um, implement this te- new technology while still remaining, you know, uh, uh, able to support legacy technologies, things like that. Like you're, you're trying to um, really bring out the complexity of the issue and tap into everyone's shared experience to try to, you're, you're genuinely trying to find an answer from the people, from everyone in the room to collaboratively solve these, these problems. Mm-hmm. 